this maximum amount of time was about nine minutes? No. The doctor never said that. The doctor never said it was about nine minutes. What the doctor said, if you read the testimony, is you can't tell. But she, they're, they're going to sit here and sell this fucking lie. The doctor never said nine minutes. It was the defense that suggested nine minutes. And the doctor didn't even say, yeah, didn't even agree to that. They said, the Dr. Partridge said, you can't tell. Go read it. I want you to store something upstairs. You know that you're lying right now. We're going to talk about that. Nine minutes from the time that his wounds were inflicted to the time that he took his last breath. If anybody reads the testimony, the defense is the one that said nine minutes. The medical examiner's last conclusion on that was, you can't tell. And I'll go back at it again. She's saying nine minutes. Listen. Nine minutes, right, until he collapsed. It, it, you know, until he collapsed. The, the doctor did say until he collapsed. And he did not collapse until Darla came back from running that knife back out because he crawled away 25 feet. You're a liar, Danelle. Anybody can read it. Read it. Oh, man. It's important. Oh, it's important to have that timeline. Yeah. It's important. You need that timeline, but you don't have it. There's no way to determine that Damon would have lived nine minutes. He was on the 911 call for five minutes and 24 seconds. That's how long the 911 call lasted. She also, we have to take into account that there was a two minute window where the police officers were clearing the scene. And then the paramedics traveling from. You also have to take into consideration that the doctor said until he fell and collapsed. Charlie said he was up and he tapped her on the shoulder. This is after he'd been stabbed. And he said, mommy, mommy. Then she saw a man. Then she went after the man and said that Damon was coming behind her. And she turned around and said, no, stay right here. So he hadn't collapsed at that point yet. Their ambulance into the house. So that was roughly two minutes is what they said, they estimated. So police officers have cleared the scene. That took two minutes. Her phone call was five minutes and 44 seconds. Um, that leaves us with a whopping one minute and 16 seconds. No. It doesn't leave you with a whopping one minute and 16 seconds. What time did Darren go to bed? And the, the, the paramedic that had Damon in his hands, they were already there, said he was still awake, and he took his last breath when the paramedics were already there. There's no nine minutes. You're a liar. And you have to sit there and lie. You are disrespecting your nephews. You're lying. At one minute and 16 seconds, she has to complete the following items. She had to take some of the boy's blood, some from Devin and from Damon, and smear it on the sock. That sock had to have been taken 75 yards down the alley, dropped off in front of a storm drain and right beside a, dump, a trash can, drop that sock off, around and run all the way back to her house, which was another 75. Now remember, they want to convince you that she couldn't have done this, any of this, before she called 911. So traveling on foot, barefoot, 150 no, 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 she's going to say barefoot, right? No, 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 no. Look at Darren's uh, Reebok. I forget the exhibit number. They're a black pair of Reebok. There's a picture of them. They were sitting by the front door. As you come in and out of the foyer, the tongues were pulled out, the laces were pulled out, and Darley's blood was all around them. Next. A part that had been smeared with a small amount of the boy's blood. Then, once she gets back to the house and regains an entrance into the house, she has to uh, not only cut her own throat with her non dominant hand. And it's easier to cut your her own throat with your non-dominant hand. Try it. 
She also has to stab herself in her left shoulder and also stab herself in her dominant forearm. Her right forearm had a stab wound in it as well. So not only those wounds, but also she had bruising and, and um, scratches on her chin. That didn't show up for four days later after she got out of the hospital. Right here, her mouth was um, damaged. The inside, the lining of her lips was really kind of tore up. Um, kind of looked like hamburger meat on the inside of her mouth. Except for the doctors didn't say anything about that. Open, kind of raw, irritated. Her lips were swollen. They weren't so swollen. They they weren't so swollen that she couldn't say, "I need pain medicine." She also had to make small cuts to her left fingers. There was some slices to her left fingers. Not super deep. Why she did that when she pulled the screen down? In fact, we're superficial. Here we go with that word again. Minor cuts. Which just means close to the surface. No, that doesn't mean minor cut. They were across the inside of her fingers. Uh, and they were on three fingers. She also had to take that knife and make cuts to her nightgown. This is all not stuff that she could... Why could she have done that before Darren went to bed? These cuts did not line up with any of her injuries. They were simply cuts in her nightgown. Still, still very, very unexplained. unexplained. Still, still doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, how did the intruder do that? Uh, there's there's not, not a way to really fold that nightgown to make those cuts line up with her wounds either. So mysterious cuts, cuts to, to the nightgown, nightgown that, that don't, don't make a whole lot of sense. sense. She, she had, had to, to then run, run through, through the, the kitchen, kitchen. She said herself she's running through the kitchen to the utility room, leaving blow drops there and uh, along the side of the island back into the living room. She then had to lay down, down on the couch, the couch because, because there was blood on the couch. There was blood on the pillow in which she was lying on. And there was also blood that gravitated back towards um, the... There was no appreciable blood on the couch. The left collar of her nightshirt kind of up around the corner and it dripped across the back of her nightgown. I'll show you a picture in just a second. So after she gets up from lying down, and she has to lie down in order to make that blood stain appear the way it appears on her nightshirt. So now she has to get up. Yeah, because that blood couldn't drip straight down from her standing up. She had to be laying down, right? From that said couch and start performing the other staging tasks. So she's got to throw a wine glass. Take, take it, it from, from the, the wine rack. rack. Nope. That's when the timeline starts for Darren. Throw it and, and bust that wine glass so that it's on the floor in front of the island, kind of in between the island and the kitchen. Um, she, she also has, has to move the, the vacuum, vacuum cleaner, there, which, because um, Helena had last said she had left it by the wine rack, she had to lean on that, that vacuum cleaner, move it around a little bit, make a track. Um, I think there was two different tracks in the wheels. She said she used that vacuum cleaner to lean on when Waddell was in the house. From that vacuum cleaner. And then she had to pick up the vacuum cleaner and lay it on top of footprints in front of the sink. Um, and essentially make that vacuum cleaner a barrier to, to get, get to, to the sink. sink which, which she was, was actively going back and forth to to get towels. So when did the vacuum cleaner fall over? Before or after? She was going to get towel. Weird. So she's got to move the vacuum cleaner and kind of bleed on the vacuum cleaner in some random places. Um, and then she has to move it several times based on what um, Bevel says in his testimony, the blood expert. He says that it was moved several times in, in, in that, that fresh blood, blood. And, and then, then it was placed on top of that footprint. Oh, so now what Bevel says is convenient for you. Um, then she has to clean the basin of the sink because they said there was a cleanup. So she doesn't touch the front of the cabinets. cabinets. She, doesn't she doesn't touch, touch the, front the front of the, of the countertops. Um, she does not touch the outside edge of the sink, but she has to clean up the basin of the sink, but still leave a few drops of blood in the basin of the sink and also leave that baby bottle in the sink because that baby bottle was found in the sink. According 
to the place she then had to go into the living room and wipe down part of the couch that had the handprint on it. Wrong. She didn't wipe down part of the couch that had a handprint on it. That came from a different source, but we'll get into that later. Which would later be found when the Rollet Police Department attempted to spray luminol on the couch, and it showed a handprint on the couch, which then disappeared as that luminol dripped down the front of the couch. What? Well, that was from Damon getting up. That's not how luminol works, but okay, so then she had to... That is how anything that is wet on a surface that it can lick down to is going to drip. That won't stick. Wipe up a handprint from the couch so that it could later be shown by luminol, but then drip down mm -hmm. the front of the couch from the luminol. Why would the officer even mention it? Anyways, that makes my head hurt. Then, um, then she had to start yelling for Darren. And then she, she had, had to, to pick, pick up the phone, phone and call 911. Okay, okay, here's, here's where it gets good. Hold on. The average adult, adult female, female runs, runs anywhere, anywhere from, from 5, 5 to 8.8 8 8 8 miles per hour. That's on average. Just roughly, let's guess that Darlie could have, she was 26 years old. Pretty healthy. Let's just guesstimate that she could have ran 6 miles per hour, roughly. Um, that is going to give you 2.93 yards per second, which means that she had an estimated 51.2 seconds that she would have, and that's if she's booking it pretty fast. To take, take that, that sock, sock 75 yards down, down the alley, alley drop, drop that sock off, and then come back. That leaves us with, hold on, let me do my math. Are you ready? She would have had 24 seconds, seconds to complete everything on that list that I just gave you. Except, except for running, running the sock down the alley. Because, because running, running the sock, the sock down, down the alley would have taken her 51.2 seconds, seconds, roughly estimating it. Ladies, if you have large breasts, you know that it took her much longer than 51 seconds to run that sock down the alley. How did all that get done? We're not even talking about cutting the screen. We're not even talking about knocking over the coffee table. We're not talking about... I'll tell you how it all got done. All that stuff was done before Darren went to bed, and then, you know, she called 911 after she slit her throat. There is no nine minutes. There's no medical expert who said Damon would live nine minutes. That's a lie, and you need that timeline. You need it to make it work. It's a lie, and the medical detect uh, examiner never said that. It was suggested, but the the final answer was you can't tell. Period. <laughs>